So I grew up in Silicon Valley. I got to meet Steve Jobs when I worked at Intel. I got to have a barbecue at Bill Gates' house. And one of the things that was so amazing is how did all this innovation happen? You ever wondered about that? Luckily, Walter Isaacson put together a book called The Innovators that tells the story from computer from inception to where we are today. And there's a lot of amazing nuggets that can benefit you on your own journey. There's five key things that you can take away. Let's dive in. So the first story up is great business ideas come from solving your own problem. I don't know if you know this, but part of the reason computers were invented was for the US census. Yes, the census where they're like, how many people live in the state and so forth. They used to have to tab it with cards. So they had a card and they'd have to read all, this, all the information. And someone said, there's gotta be a better way to tabulate all these cards. And so there was a gentleman of the name Presper Eckert and John Mulchley who created the Univac and marketed it as the first major improvement in actually creating a computer. They are able to tabulate 4,000 cards per minute. So how can you apply this in your own business? Think about the problem going on in your own life. Do you need to tabulate something faster? Is something taking too long? Is the commute too annoying? That's a business that you can go and solve. So second up is get a diverse group of people together. So Bell Labs, which many of you probably haven't heard of, was the inventor of the transistor, which is supposedly one of the greatest inventions. And they were able to do that by bringing together physicists, engineers, theorists, and a lot of really interesting people in close proximity. They also invented, I looked it up, they invented a lot of calculators. They invented things for sound and video and a lot of really impressive things that we benefit from today. And so what's really important for underdogs just like you is don't find co-founders that are the exact same. So at AppSumo, I'm like the loud talkative one and Chad, my business partner, is the pattern matching technical one. And then we also fortunately have Eamon, who's the guy that's very consistent and is the operator. So for you, find complementary skill sets. Another thing is hang out and hang out in areas that are not gonna have the same crowds. I found a product management Slack group. Not really doing it that much, but it's been interesting to see what they're talking about in there. So what was fascinating on the counter side of that point is that there was a lot of people who invented some really impressive things in the Midwest, but because they didn't have money and they didn't have people or resources around them, they weren't actually able to bring their invention out. So if you are not with the big network, that's something you might wanna actually consider for yourself because there's so many impressive people that history's never heard of because of that. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I am giving away things like my Tesla to one of our subscribers and we do exclusive weekly office hours where I'll answer your questions for free. Number three, get inspirations from different areas. In the book, the first major market for microchips and a lot of the products that were created for computers that we're benefiting from today was the military. So the civilian space program, along with the military, used a lot of computers and technologies and the transistors that we talked about to build ballistic missiles. Specifically, the computer back in the day was called the ENIAC. And I don't know if you've heard of that, but that's one of the first original computers. It was designed primarily, this is crazy, for handling differential equations, which were used to calculate missile trajectories. That's what's led to us being able to have something like the iPhone, these iPads, these computers, was from actually shooting off missiles. And so for your own business and your own things that you're thinking about as an underdog, think about what are other categories that I can be learning from, exploring from, creating for potentially, or just copying from, and bring that into my own world. So for your YouTube channel, one of the things that we like to do is go look at other channels. Maybe it's Furious Pete's Food Eating, maybe it's Mr. Beast, maybe it's potentially even Shark Tank, which is kind of similar, and say, well, what are the most popular videos they're doing? What are the topics they're talking about that we can do? and then actually copy and do that for ourselves. So that's how you can make it a lot more accessible for you. If you like these type of book reviews, by the way, make sure you hit that like button below and let me know if you want me to do more of them. All right, so this is really cool, rapid validation. And I worked at Microsoft, it was my dream in life, and I actually didn't even know this story. It's got a lot of stuff like this in the book, but Bill Gates did rapid validation and got customers before he actually coded anything. So the story goes is that there's a company called MITS down in Albuquerque, New Mexico, what up Albuquerque, who created the Altair 8800 computer. It needed a programming language for it. So Bill Gates called them up, said, hey, we have the software for you. We can come down there and demo it. They didn't have any software. So they had three weeks to actually create it. They went down, gave the demo in person, and literally the rest 40, 50 years is history. And so what's so fascinating about that for you underdogs, that was really inspiring for me as well, is like, go get customers first. Minimum viable customer. Get them first, build later. You can go to the YouTube search and actually look up Million Dollar Weekend. I show you exactly how you can do that just for yourself. So last up is innovator traits. And this was super fascinating to me to think about how can I be just like them? How can you be just like them? And there's a few key things that they were able to do. Number one is that all of the most amazing visionaries were able to pair up with an operator. So someone's thinking about the crazy ass wild ideas and someone's actually having to build it. Wozniak came up with the computer stuff, Jobs sold it. 
But that was something that you need to think about that for yourself. If you're the executor and the one that's actually able to create things, maybe you need to find someone who's thinking a little bit further ahead for you in your own business. Next up that I thought was really fascinating was permission. All of them said this to the permission. And what that means is that they were not asking for permission to do the things they wanted to do. Bill Gates dropped out of school back in the day, which was not very common for someone, especially at Harvard. What's fascinating about that is that if you're following the rules, you're gonna get the same results as everyone else. So you kind of have to think about how do I start pushing the limits and breaking some laws out there? So the last thing, and I talked about this earlier, was that the major innovation, if you create it, but no one knows about it, it's not an innovation. And so the real breakthrough came from people who were able to take the innovations and make it actually applicable for the consumer industry. There was many inventions at Xerox Park. I'm sure you guys have seen a few videos about that where Steve Jobs actually took pieces from there, he paid for them, and they put it in the Apple Mac products, and that's actually how they got super popular, specifically with graphic user interfaces or GUIs. Leave a comment with the next business book I should do a review on. Here's three bonus things that are just were so good I had to share with you. First off is a mission statement. Number one, imagine a world in where every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. That is the Wikipedia mission statement. That is one of the bonuses I wanna share. I just thought it was freaking beautiful, and it's something to aspire to in all of our own companies. Next up is blogger.com. It's by Ev Williams. He's now the founder of Medium. He also helped start Twitter. Blogger.com got bought by Google. What was fascinating about that is that there was actually a time that it was just about to fail and he had to fire everyone and go work out of other people's offices just to survive. And he put up a blog post saying, and then there was one. We ran out of money. I've lost my team. The last two years have been hard. And if anyone wants to share some office space with me, let me know, I could use the cost savings. A lot of times on that road to success, there's the stories and the things that happen behind the curtain and in the kitchen that we don't hear about. So I was really appreciated how much he believed in what he was doing and how much he went to did whatever it takes to make it work. I think there's a lot of things to take away for us. And the last thing, this was really fascinating is with Google with data. Google, again, they started as a PhD research project to find better information online, specifically in academic papers. And then they realized, wow, this is a bigger opportunity. But specifically, what Google did more than other companies, they said, what is the result for the customer? How do we blow our customers' minds, figuratively? And so they were studying user behavior very early on and actually tweaking their algorithm to seeing how long people would click, go to a page, and if they came back or not, and then keep tweaking their algorithm, where actually a lot of the other results, if you remember back in the day when Google launched, it was dramatically different and better than everything else out there. So the takeaway for you and me uh, with that specific example is, how do we use our data to make better decisions? And how do we actually say, all right, if they come back to our site, that's actually worse. It's a little counterintuitive, but it's something that I want to plant the seed in, in your and my business. If you've enjoyed this book review, check out our my Maverick book review, which helped our grow our business to $30 million. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I'm giving away a Tesla to one of our subscribers in the upcoming month, and we give out a lot of other cool things just for subscribers. I love you, and I'll see you out there.